Stephanie Lin is a director of marketing at 500 Startups, one of the world's leading venture capital firms. She has since led branding, positioning, and licensor relationships for top grossing gaming companies, including Dina and Kabam. She's proud to represent in STEM, uh, women in STEM and Taiwanese Americans as Miss Asian America 2015 and invites opportunities to collaborate. With women being more educated than ever, yet holding fewer leadership positions, it's imperative that we work together to empower women to take their place at the top. Stephanie Lin will be talking about her role in promoting women in STEM and what we can do to stop ourselves from holding back. So please welcome to the stage the 2015 Miss Asian America, Stephanie Lin. Thank you so much, Jen, for that very warm introduction. Um, I'd like to thank, first of all, the Imagine Talks team for having me today and for organizing this fantastic conference. It's very much about women's empowerment. Uh, my name is Stephanie Lin. As Jen mentioned, I am known to most of you as Miss Asian America, but my friends also know me as this sort of nerdy gamer chick. I'm a huge fan of Pokemon. I love live streaming, um, first-person shooters, um, and I'm insatiably curious about people and places and at my core, I am very much a storyteller. And hopefully the stories that I share here with you today will help spark that conversation between all of us on how we can help our workplaces, how we can help create a more inclusive and welcoming workplace for people of all genders and race. Now, before I go on any further, I actually want to do something fun, which is a group selfie. So... I just wrapped a media tour in Taiwan where I was asked a lot of questions about what it's like to be a woman in STEM. That's science, technology, engineering, and math. And the more I spoke about the topic, the more I realized that there's already a lot of general awareness about the fact that we don't have equal representation in the workforce. Now, show of hands, how many of you are aware that we currently have low numbers of women in STEM, but this is currently a very male-dominated space? Just a show of hands. Okay. So most of you, that's great. So it's common knowledge, right? If we look at the headlines today, the phrase woman in tech, women in tech, is dropped so often, it feels like another buzzword, something to feed more clicks, likes, revenue. There's also chatter from a lot of companies like Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, Dropbox, about their efforts. They're reportedly improving their efforts to try and hire more women. A ton of money is also poured into these initiatives every single year. Now, tackling the challenge of diversity, equality in STEM is no easy task. But despite all of this effort, the numbers still are not changing. So what exactly is the problem? In a recent report by the U.S. Department of Commerce, uh, it uh, the U.S. Department of Commerce attributes this problem to a lack of female role models and gender stereotyping as possible factors. Sexual harassment and less family-friendly flexibility are also contributing factors. But I think that a big challenge that women need to overcome is something that's much closer to home, and that is ourselves. We're holding ourselves back in ways that many of us, including our male peers, don't see because the problem starts in here. These barriers are internalized behaviors these barriers, I should say, are internalized behaviors. They are a part of us, like when we over-apologize for a mistake. We worry about overreaching when we decide we want to negotiate for a higher salary. When we focus on being perfect, it's these actions and thoughts, while invisible, are very real barriers that hold us women back in the workplace. Women today have a problem with fear whether it's the fear of failure, of being disliked, of being a bad daughter, mother, or wife, fear is, as Facebook CEO Sheryl Sandberg says, at the root of so many of the barriers that women face today. Studies also show that women are much more likely than men to lack self-confidence and feel like frauds in the workplace. And at a time where adult success is tied as closely with confidence as competency, it's no wonder that there are so few women in STEM, much less in leadership positions. Okay. So, today, 
I challenge all women to look at themselves in the mirror and take accountability for our own behavior, to recognize when we might be underestimating ourselves or taking notes rather than speaking up in a board meeting. And I ask all men to listen, understand, and encourage your female peers. Because once we practice empathy and achieve mutual understanding, that's when I believe we can start creating effective programs that create equality in the workplace. Now before I go on further, I also want to say that I don't claim to have all the right answers, all the answers. In fact, I still, I still deal with moments where I struggle to be perfect. Okay? I also want to recognize that some of the points that I bring up today may apply more to some women than to others because we're all raised differently and we all come from very different backgrounds. Okay. So here we go. This talk is about some of the ways that women hold ourselves back. And I believe that there are three. First, there's a confidence gap that exists between men and women. Second, women are perfectionists. And third, women are much more likely than men to feel like frauds in the workplace. Let's look first at the confidence gap. Now, numerous studies show that women regularly underestimate their abilities compared to men. Women, and Asian Americans in particular, are taught that as long as we keep our heads down, if we're modest and we play by the rules, our work will be rewarded. Now, how many of you remember being told this when you were being raised, when you were growing up? Okay, a few of you, okay. Now, here's my story. I remember sitting in a room with some top executives in gaming video games, all male, and I was there with my manager, also white and male, to discuss the marketing plan for a new game. Now note that I'm uh, one of the first product marketers in the mobile gaming space. Um, I had a lot of experience with um, working with major brand integration, I had several successful product launches under my belt, and I poured hours into that presentation, but in that meeting I found myself unable to speak, and I let my manager do all the talking. Now, I watched everyone banter back and forth, and I felt more and more incompetent. I couldn't negotiate like my boss did. He knew when to be aggressive. He knew when to crack a joke. He was so perfect. Meanwhile, I didn't think I could provide any value to that conversation, so I held back. And I read my inner dialogue back to myself, and I just cringe because, in retrospect, I know I earned my place at that table but I didn't trust myself to sit down and own it. So I shared this story with a girlfriend of mine who's a startup developer who also teaches at Hackbright Academy, and that's a school that teaches women how to code, and it was startling how similar our experiences were. She told me that in meetings when everyone else was speaking or contributing ideas, I sat in the back and I took notes. I was so worried I'd ask a stupid question or that my ideas weren't good enough. It was only after meetings were over to avoid judgment that my friend would share her thoughts one-on-one -on -one with her teammates. And her wake-up call came one day when during one of these post-meeting sessions, her colleague said, dude, why didn't you share that idea during the meeting? We could have saved 30 minutes. And that's when my friend realized that she had just as much credibility as every other person in the room to voice her opinion. And from that day on, she began to contribute a bit more openly. So women constantly underestimate our performance and abilities, while men overestimate both. Okay? In a slide, by, or rather in a report by the Institute of Leadership and Management, 50% of all women respondents reported self-doubt about their job performance compared with fewer than a third of male respondents. And men also initiate salary discussions four times more than women do. When women do negotiate salary, we ask for 30% less money than men do. So where does that difference in confidence come from? Because men doubt themselves too, but not at the degree that women do, studies show. Which brings me to the second blocker, women are perfectionists. So ladies, think back to your childhood. How many of you watched Disney movies when you grew up? Most of you, okay. How would you describe these characters? Just throw out a few adjectives. Pretty, okay. Perfect. Soft-spoken. Feminine. Innocent, okay. Kind, sweet, right. So basically, as little girls, we're surrounded by messages, right? Whether it's by the media, teachers, our parents, that to be sweet and good and innocent, you know, these are desirable 
positive traits. And we're taught that if we're patient, like Princess Aurora, if we're kind, like Snow White, if we're perfect in every way, we'll be rewarded for our good behavior and we'll find our happy ending, okay? So, what happens? We learn to avoid taking risk. We don't speak our opinions until we believe they're 100% the right ones. We spend hours editing our projects, our reports, until we believe they're impeccably perfect, and we don't go for opportunities until we feel we are perfectly qualified. Survey results show that women only apply for a promotion when they meet 100% of the qualifications, while men apply when they meet 60%. Women gain confidence, but only when we are perfect. Boys, on the other hand, will roughhouse each other on the playground. They'll bully each other, they'll call each other names, and they're exposed to a lot more punishment. In fact, studies show that boys get eight times more criticism than girls growing up. So boys become resilient to tough remarks, challenges, and failure. They learn that the upside to great risk can be great rewards. So, while our male colleagues take risks, women do things by the book. The problem is, is that the path to adult success when you're grown up is different from success in the classroom, and it doesn't involve perfect manners or presentation. That's the hard lesson that I learned as a young journalist in New York City. After I graduated UC Berkeley, I landed an internship at the network, ABC News, and I was eager to make an impact very, very quickly. I knocked on every door, pitched my skill set to every single producer who would take my story, and I researched for hours into the night. A senior producer once even stopped by my desk and he told me to go home saying, Stephanie, we're not paying you enough to stay this late. And I told them I didn't mind. I held fast to the belief that if I worked hard, good things would come. And you know, sure enough they did. I landed assignments with Barbara Walters, John Stossel, Diane Sawyer. My contributions were aired on Nationwide TV and I was on cloud frickin' nine. Eventually, I landed a producing opportunity at the local news affiliate, and it was my first full-time paid job. And as the youngest person in the newsroom, I felt I had the most to prove. I worked the overnight shifts from 12 a.m. to 9 a.m., Wednesdays to Sundays, and I'd sometimes work double shifts to chase stories on my own after the morning newscast. The environment, unfortunately, was toxic. Colleagues who ignored me when I asked questions, open arguments between coworkers, really bad office politics. So what did I do? I kept my head down. I put in the time. I was kind of like Cinderella, patiently cleaning the floors and mopping up the garbage, waiting for that promotion, waiting to be recognized for my good work. Because being a good girl had worked so far for me. But the idealist in me, the woman who wanted to tell stories that changed the world, she slowly became disillusioned. I was doing everything by the book, but rather than be rewarded, my colleagues were unsupportive. I had my ugly stepsisters, but I had no prince. I felt insignificant. It was confusing, demoralizing, and a huge blow to my self-confidence at the time. I felt like a failure, and that was the very thing I had worked so hard to avoid. So even though I'd earned my place in the top news market in the nation, in New York, I felt like people saw me as incapable. And this feeling is the third blocker, and that's called imposter syndrome. Rather than embrace our accomplishments, many women are constantly afraid of being exposed as frauds and that we don't deserve the success that we have achieved. And what I learned after New York is the importance of self-empathy that it's okay to not be superwoman, that I'm human just like everyone else. And as humans, we are by nature imperfect, and we're really not that different from one another in that way. So as women, too many of us remain silent out of fear of being judged or appearing flawed. We need to communicate, take risks, and learn from our failures. And I believe this is essential for our careers and personal growth but you certainly don't have to take my word for it. You can ask these women. And by the way, I want to see an Asian American woman up here one day, okay? I hope the stories that I've shared paint a clear picture of some of the ways that we women hold ourselves back in the workplace. 
We've made great strides towards equality, but as I detailed at the beginning, there's still a lot more that we can do. And that change starts with women addressing ourselves and men to recognize the signs and encouraging your female peers in their professional goals. And once we start to recognize the ways in which women hold ourselves back, and the standards at which men are upheld, because you know certainly men are held to certain standards, and you know that may um, uh, impact the perception towards women, we can start vocalizing for more effective change in our workplaces, our homes, our schools, and in how we raise our children. So I'd like to close with this quote here today because I know for a lot of women listening who might be struggling with some of these behaviors, it's not easy to just you know, go to your boss tomorrow and ask for that promotion or negotiate uh, for that higher, higher salary, right? And that quote is um, one of my favorites, and that is, don't let your fears overwhelm your desire. Let the barriers you face, and there will be barriers, be external and not internal. Fortune does favor the bold, and I promise that you will never know what you're capable of unless you try. And that's by Sheryl Sandberg. I'm Stephanie Lin, Miss Asian America, and you can find me on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you so much.